Don't these days remind you of last year when basically every video I made was an iPhone rumor report? Well, we're ending out January with basically just that. Just talking about this year's iPhone all over again. Except at least last year it was kind of exciting. Now we get to look forward to cheaper, more basic iPhones, so that's fun. But because everyone's asking for it, let's talk about it. So recently, Apple sheep everywhere have been flipping out because Ming-Chi Kuo has leaked or rumored information about this year's budget iPhone, the one that surprisingly is getting the most attention. See, I thought the iPhone 10 Plus would be the thing that everyone's excited for. That's why I got a 3D print of it. And this is probably the phone I'll be getting at the end of this year, but everyone wants to talk about this rumored 6.1 inch LCD budget iPhone. And the specs of it are just weird. Everything about it is mind blowing to me and I don't understand why people believe that, or if anything, why Apple would choose to make that phone. On top of that, I'm just confused why people keep assuming that this is going to happen. All of the technical specifications that they're talking about with this budget iPhone, that also happens to have the largest display of any iPhone ever, don't add up and feel very, very bizarre. So here are the tech specs that Kuo is reportedly saying this budget iPhone is going to have. So one, a regular LCD display, 6.1 inches. So first off, just a weird display size. I don't know why anyone would go to 0.1. Why not make it an even six, I don't know, but that's what they're saying. So 6.1, lower pixel per inch, okay? So it's not the high pixel density as the iPhone 10. This would be a lower one, clocking in at around 300 to 350. So taking us back to pixel density days of a regular sized iPhone 8, except this time blown up to six inches. 6.1, sorry. On top of that, he also added it will have an aluminum back. So no more wireless charging. And it will also make the switch to a single lens camera setup. No more dual camera, which had me like, wait, Wait, what? Since the iPhone 7, on the Plus model device, we've been having a dual camera for portrait mode support, for zooming in during taking videos, or zooming in while taking pictures. That's one of the primary things Apple advertised with the new dual camera setup, is the fact that it has zoom. It's not all about portrait mode, Google. There's more to photography and videography than bokeh. And then if that wasn't bad enough, he said that this model will not have 3D touch. Something that's been around since the iPhone 6s, and now, at the end of the year in 2018, we're gonna see an iPhone that removes it? And to kill all of the logic and to kill all of the reasoning for this model iPhone, it starts at $700 for the base model. Now, first of all, I don't understand who this is marketed towards. There's been some people on my Twitter that have been like, oh, that sounds interesting. I would buy that. What I just described to you was essentially an iPhone 6 Plus. No 3D touch, aluminum backing, no dual camera, large form factor, but I guess the one thing that this is actually carrying over from the 10, because it feels like this rumored budget iPhone doesn't have anything to do with the regular iPhone 10, is the new minimalistic bezels and probably face ID, I'm assuming. It's supposed to retain that same look as an iPhone 10 with one size bezel all the way around and a notch at the top. But other than that, it just feels weird. The regularly priced iPhone 8 starts at $700 and that has wireless charging, that has 3D touch. And Quo is suggesting that they're going to backtrack on all of that in favor of making a cheaper iPhone and by cheap, they mean 700. I don't know about you, but I would still kind of consider a $700 phone kind of in the flagship price range. I have no idea why people believe this. To me, I feel like this is complete bullcrap, and if anything, it's Apple trying to throw us off. As they reported on lots and lots of times last year, they were sick of all of the leaks and all of the rumors about the iPhone 10. They were worried about that because so many of the leaks were getting out, and it was actually starting to affect the sales of the iPhone 7, which they considered a good problem, but they were really going to crack down on leaks, and I think one best way to cover up your track so that people aren't looking to see what's coming out at the end of the year is to release a bunch of fake ones. That way we cannot tell what is real and what is not real. And to me, this definitely feels way too fake and way too stupid to be real. An idea of a single lens setup, aluminum back. And again, I have no idea why they would go that route, especially if the price tag is still $700. That's not a budget phone. Most people would just keep buying the iPhone 8. And by the time that phone comes out in September of this year, the iPhone 8 will be even cheaper and will have features and modes that that phone wouldn't have. So Here's my prediction. Here's why I think we're hearing about these kinds of things. There's many options out there other than the one I just suggested, which is Apple's just trying to throw out a bunch of bad news to throw us off to make us think that this year's iPhones are gonna suck. But a secondary option is I think that Kuo, while being fairly accurate as a rumor or leak reporter in the past, has been wrong about a lot of things. I also recall him saying that in 2017, we were gonna get an iPad without a home button. Also claiming that Touch ID would be embedded in the iPhone 10, which it wasn't. See, if you're a leaker, 
or reporter and you literally just make every wild accusation you can, eventually you're gonna be right about a couple things, but people aren't really gonna remember you for the things you were wrong about. This seems like one of those situations in which we're gonna find out he was wrong. But anyway, my theory is that they're getting their reports confused about the upcoming iPhone SE refresh, because a lot of what he's describing sounds like an iPhone SE. Single lead and setup, aluminum casing, and perhaps it's not an aluminum bag, because I'm hoping that if they refresh the iPhone SE, they go with a glass back to support wireless charging. Not having 3D touch, the iPhone SE does not have 3D touch. Starting at $700, I'm not really sure where they got that, but perhaps there is some form of six inch iPhone in the works that will be like a larger version of the SE. I'm not sure. I just feel like he's grabbing at very random facts and then just trying to put them all together and say, this is what next year's budget iPhone's gonna be. And again, budget in quotation marks. I don't see how $700 while sacrificing basically all of the cool stuff makes a better product. You know what? If people really want a budget iPhone, I think this is what they should make. How about a five inch iPhone that resembles the iPhone 10's form factor? Okay, so basic face ID, same size bezel all the way around, but you keep maybe the 350 to 400 pixel per inch screen resolution. That way prices aren't as high. You can make it LCD if that helps bring the price lower. You build the casing out of aluminum or even steel enforced plastic like you did on the 5C because a lot of people ask about that 10C concept. And perhaps another way to maybe make the phone more cheaper or perhaps lighter is to give it a plastic back. Again, this would not be a very premium device, but I think it would keep costs lower because wireless charging, if you didn't know, can still work through plastic. It doesn't necessarily need glass. Glass feels better and feels a lot more secure, but if you were going for cheapness, because probably one of the biggest complaints with the iPhone 10 last year was it's too expensive, is that you could adopt that plastic back, maybe just stick with a single lens camera, maybe give it last year's processor, the A11, instead of what this next one's gonna be, the A12 or whatever, and maybe the megapixels aren't as high. That's kind of things I think you can sacrifice on, but I'm very confused for this idea of a giant phablet-sized phone that compromises on the future of wireless charging, which Apple is pushing so hard, compromises on camera quality while still retaining a $700 price point. Whereas if they went with more of the 10C route, which there's been a lot of concepts for, they could probably get the price lower to $600 to $500. Maybe that could be unveiled alongside the iPhone SE2, which would basically resemble what the iPhone SE looks like now, just with a glass back, maybe starting at around 450. That sounds a lot more reasonable and a lot more doable if you're looking for premium, but still budget looking iPhone. Whereas of course, I think the given thing we're definitely going to see is for one, a redesigned iPhone 10 that has a 5.8 inch display, fixes a lot of the complaints we had with last year's iPhone 10. So more color options this time, more evened out camera bump into the people thinking that the iPhone 10 is going to get discontinued. Probably need to do a whole video on that. But my quick two cents on the matter is that the Apple Watch Series Zero, the first gen, that was discontinued after a year, as was the iPhone 5, as was the iPhone 5C. Not because the sales were doing bad, but just because there was a new replacement budget phone to replace it. I think a very similar thing is going to happen at the end of this year. We're going to get a regular sized 5.8 inch iPhone 10 that's updated, better specs, better battery and stuff like that, improved face ID, and that is going to fill the void of where our current iPhone 10 is now, and it won't make sense to keep selling that, even if it's at a lower price, because there will be a lower priced one that will also be cheaper. Either way though, I'm very confused by these rumors and I really hope they're not true because they don't make any sense. I don't think Apple thinks that way. It doesn't make sense to me that they would backtrack that heavily. Either way though, I'm still gonna be getting a 10 plus. I really, really like the idea of an iPhone 10 blown up to the form factor of a regular iPhone 8 plus. I could see myself getting used to that very easily. And I think that when Apple's designing big phones with huge over six inch displays, those should be the premium ones. Those do not need to be the budget ones. Such a low pixel density on such a large display would look ugly and switching to an all aluminum casing on something this big would just be bizarre. And I think taking us way back in development in smartphones, so ugh, just blah, weird rumors. I don't get it at all. Anyway, let me know what you think of the budget LCD iPhone rumors down there in the comments below. I think they're weird. This is your Apple Sheep here and I will see you in the next one.